Hey, this is Mr. Mason, and what we're going to do in this video is use the Pythagorean theorem to solve a problem involving two right triangles. Now, to use the Pythagorean theorem, one thing we have to remember is that to find the length of any one of the three sides of a right triangle, you need to know the length of two of the three sides. That means we have to start with this triangle right here. Because if you look at this triangle down here, we only know the length of one of the three sides. But for this larger right triangle, we know two of the three side lengths. Now, the two line segments that form the right angle are the legs of the right triangle, represented by A and B in the equation. So 5 is one of the triangle's legs, so we're going to substitute 5 in for A. So we're going to square that. We do not know the length of this leg, so what we're going to do is leave B alone. We don't have anything to substitute in for B. But we do know the length of this triangle's hypotenuse, which is 8. So what we're going to do is take 8 and square that. All right, all we have to do now is solve for b, and that's going to tell us the length of this line right here. So what we're going to do first is we're going to take 5 to the second power and move it to the other side of the equation. And because this was a positive 5 squared, we're going to write it as minus 5 squared on this side. All right, now we're going to write our equation in terms of b to the second power, which is equal to 8 squared, which is 64, minus 5 squared, which is 25. All right, now if we take 64 and 25 and subtract, that leaves us with 39. All right, now to isolate our variable of b, or to get rid of this exponent of 2 right here, we should remember that a square root and a square are opposites of each other. They cancel out. So that would leave us with b. And we do the same thing to the other side to balance our equation. Now the square root of 39 is in simplest radical form. It does not have any factors that are perfect squares. Now we know that the length of this line right here is equal to the square root of 39 centimeters. So now we know two of the three lengths of this right triangle. So what we're going to do is use the Pythagorean theorem one more time. All right, now we know one of the two legs given, which is 3. So we're going to substitute that in for a. So we have 3 squared. We do not know the length of the second leg, so we're going to leave that as b squared. And we're going to substitute the square root of 39 in for c. So we have to take the square root of 39, and we have to square that. All right, now, what we're going to do next is we're going to write this in terms of b to the second power. So we're going to take this 3 squared and move it to the other side as minus 3 to the second power. And that leaves us with b to the second power is equal to, now remember, a square root and a square cancel each other out. So that leaves us with 39 minus 3 to the second power, which is 9. So now we have an equation that reads b squared is equal to 39 minus 9, which is equal to 30. And to remove this exponent of 2, we have to take the square root of b to the second power, so they cancel out. And we have to balance our equation by taking the square root of 30, which leaves us with b is equal to the square root of 30, which is our answer. Now, let's say you took the square root of 39 and punched that into a calculator. You would get a value that is approximately equal to 6.2 centimeters when rounded to the nearest tenth. And if you took the square root of 30 to the nearest tenth, that would be approximately equal to 5.5. Now, these two values seem reasonable because if we were to replace x here with a height of 5.5 and replace the square root of 39 with a length of about 6.2, we can see that the hypotenuse is the longest out of the three sides, which is always true for any right triangle. The hypotenuse is always the longest of the three sides. And we can see that this leg is just a bit shorter than 6.2, but definitely longer than 3 centimeters. So sometimes it's a good idea to figure out, even when asked to express in simplest radical form, what the values are as a decimal so you can just kind of see if your answers are reasonable or not. 